father since I was a young boy. I've loved you with a boyish crush, been upset with you, and eventually accepted you with all your flaws, including your imperialistic and colonizer past. I've overlooked your revisionist tendencies and the unwelcoming glares in certain areas of your territory. But in the past few years, I've seen a side of you that I'm deeply ashamed of, a side that feels like the inappropriate family member at a holiday celebration. Recently, I've come to realize that this drunken relative wasn't drunk at all. They meant every single word they said. For the past six or seven years, I've watched as many in the UK relentlessly attacked a woman on social media, in the printed press, online, and on broadcast TV shows from every single network. They insisted it wasn't racism because Britain isn't racist. The mental manipulation to turn you against this woman was constant and daily. They dehumanized her to the point that when she disclosed her mental health struggles, she was laughed at and not believed. When she revealed her on wanting to unlive herself, she was attacked. Her husband blames the tabloid press for the stress that contributed to her miscarriage. When she wrote about her experience to help other women discuss this painful experience, critics called her a hypocrite for asking for privacy while sharing something so personal. These critics knew exactly what they were doing. They were justifying the hate you felt towards her. And if you didn't, they planted the seed. This relentless campaign of hatred has become normalized. The megaphones, royal correspondents, experts, and specialists who made Princess Diana's life a living hell are now targeting the wife of Diana's youngest son Many wish for her demise so they can have back their prince. I didn't know he was lost. By now, you might know I'm talking about the wife of Prince Harry, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. Now you may think, well, that is absurd. That is rather silly. How can you relate those two things? What has been happening in Britain, on the streets, all over the place in England? The kind of hate, the kind of barbarism. How can you relate the two things? One is just gossip and fun and entertainment. Is it? Is it? Number of issues is that the monarchy is supposed to be apolitical. They are supposed to provide comfort to people, reassurance, stability. If you cannot condemn a racially motivated riot. Maybe it's because you're not ready to have that conversation in your own house. I mean, it's telling that from the Royal Rota, this this was the most positive thing that they could do to show diversity of their servants. And obviously the concern around race after Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview. This is not, there were people on both sides. This is one side that created a boogeyman, a boogeyman that they have seen over and over and over again on TV. They've heard it through politicians, through the news media. How does silence do anything 
but embolden those people. Speaking of that, a friend of mine made a very good point. People can't have it both ways. You can't want a strong commonwealth and also want to decide who gets to be considered British. Do I think that we are going to hear from Prince William, the modern king that the papers have been promising us? Highly doubt it. He won't even reveal how much income tax he voluntarily paid. That's because the British royal family gets to play let's make a deal when it comes to paying tax. But his father, the king, did. He published a full cost breakdown, just like Buckingham Palace. Comms is trying to pivot away from the riots to other work that the royals are doing so that people forget this. Let's dig any deeper to maybe look at ways that Liam is actually showing less transparency. Well, that doesn't work with the modern king narrative that you have scripted for his character. Royal reporting is more like a soap opera in many cases than actual journalism. It'll be interesting to see if the British media covers this at all, if they cover the fact that Charles has not spoken up and said anything, if they push back, if they ask more questions. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no, but I would love to be shocked. The role of the British monarchy is to bring stability, reassurance, comfort to its people. How comforting and reassuring is their silence to people of color? Or are we pandering to a certain kind of British person of which their silence is very reassuring, maybe even celebrated. Meghan is the victim of the same sentiments of hate and racism we see on the streets of the UK, where innocent people are attacked and migrant families hide in fear as rioters attempt to burn down shelters like the Holiday Inn. Over the past fortnight, violence disorder has spread across the country in the wake of the stabbing of three young children in Southport. After misinformation spread that the killer was a Muslim asylum seeker. Now I ask you this question. If it were a Muslim asylum seeker, would all of this be justified? We know by now that what's happening has nothing to do with the tragedy of these three young girls being stabbed. Thousands of police officers have been deployed to prepare for further action after racism and racist and Islamophobic attacks have led to stabbings, street beatings, and mosque under siege. The royal family, which stands at the very top of UK society, allow the first biracial member to be relentlessly abused. Many have taken note. If the royal family will not defend their only black biracial member, their silence signal approval of racist ideologies. Nigel Farage, Suala Berverman, Pierce Morgan, Camilla Tomley, Richard Eden, Rebecca English, and they go on and on and on. Them and their invisible sources, TV News, Talk TV, and the tabloids have all contributed to the chaos the UK finds itself in. Spend just one week watching and reading the things said and written about Meghan Markle, and you will see how racist and hateful sentiments are justified against people who don't look like you. And when I mean you, I mean like what the royal family looks like. Remember what Jeremy Clarkson wrote? He hates her on a cellular level. You know how profound that kind of hate needs to be? On a cellular level, more than a vicious criminal, he said so. He hates a woman he has never met. 
doesn't know simply because he believes she has done something against the monarchy? And the worst part is they can't prove any of their assertions other than, well, I, I read it in the newspaper, I read it in the tabloid, oh, a royal correspondent said so, a royal expert said it, oh, it was in the book of so-and-so, oh, the biography of so-and-so said so. <clears throat> really? However, in 24 hours, a lot of them seem to have found some kind of moral compass and identifying the far right and others <laughs> to deflect from their own culpability. May I start naming them? I am sure you've seen it. All of a sudden, they are so offended by racism, Islamophobia. And for those mainstream reporters, journalists of color, brown, black, who took it within themselves to criticize Meghan Markle and to subscribe to the nonsense that was being said about this woman, how do you feel? How do you feel that the establishment you upheld, and I'll stop it there, the irony is palpable. Figures like Pierce Morgan, who have relentlessly attacked Meghan Markle, calling her a liar and undermining her mental health struggles. Now call out billionaire tech owner Elon Musk for fanning the flames of unrest in the UK. <laughs> If it wasn't so tragic, my laugh would not be as fake as it is. Morgan and the tabloids and all this other royal ronda, rotunda, ro whatever you are, with your lies, are the biggest hypocrites. The tabloid press is fundamentally one of the biggest disseminators of hate. And now that the country is in turmoil, they pretend someone else is to blame. Have you seen the headlines? Have you seen the front pages? You would think there were saints. When I was a child and in pain from being in the hospital, See, I was a sickly child. My parents would often say, tomorrow will be a better day, son. Tomorrow will be better. The good people of Britain packed the streets and showed their heart. Some in unison exclaimed, immigrants, migrants are welcome here. But how does one erase Images of parents standing with their young children as violence and hate tried to burn innocent people alive in a hotel. And others encouraging their children to take part in this unspeakable horror. Attacks on terrified police trying to protect the hotel and other establishments. Well, some of those establishments were consumed by that fire of hate and ignorance. This past weekend, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex launched a portal, a website, the first of its kind, to help parents dealing with a child ensnared by social media and those behind a screen handing your child the means to unalive themselves and stripping them of their will to exist. I would hope we can all agree this is a good thing. They're trying to help parents. They're trying to help, to have an impact. The Duchess of Sussex was asked about her experience dealing with an alarming amount of abuse and bullying 
from the entire media in the UK. She responded gracefully with visible nervousness and discomfort, knowing that no matter what she said, it would be weaponized against her. And without skipping a beat, it was. One sickly mind called her words a veiled threat to the royal family. A veiled threat to the royal family. Can you believe that? So even as the country is in turmoil because of racist, hateful rhetoric, there was still time to continue to hate on Meghan Markle. The way Britain and the royal family treat Meghan Markle will be the same for every person that is not white. Until you do right by her, nothing will truly change. It will all be surface level makeup. Of the last, you know, several centuries, these terrible tendencies that you describe are tendencies that perhaps exist in every human being regardless of colour. I think so. It's just that in this case, in your particular life situation, you regard whites as potentially your betrayers, yes? In the large sense, yes, because of the nature of the last, you know, several centuries. But I'm not at all unaware that I can be betrayed by blacks and all sorts of people, by men or women. It's inescapable. There's no point in pretending that we are angels. We are not. I'd like to think that I would rather die than betray my humanity. I'd rather die than be less than what I am. I don't want to live a life that is so degraded. I could not help a person of another race or gender or culture and save them. That's what I think. Do you then see yourself as somehow a victim of history? We all are. But you know, I want you to understand that if I see Say during the civil rights movement, there were women <clears throat> who would rush out to the schoolyards when they were trying to integrate schools and they would uh, push over the school buses uh, that were bringing black children to the school, push them over and set them afire. And when I saw that, I was wondering whether I could ever get a group of black women under any circumstances, from any walk of life, to hurt some white children, to set a bus on fire full of white children for any reason. Prostitutes, drug addicts, ministers, teachers, black women of any level. Could I call them all together and say, we have got to burn these white children? And I didn't believe I could ever find that. So I thought those white mothers, they were not just white women, they had actually had children. They knew what that was like. But they could do that to those children. They could spit at a child. So I thought that is the most degrading life I could imagine of being an adult who could do that. If I were those white people, the absence of that shame was so profound that the real victim was not those children. It was those women who had given up everything, their motherhood, their womanhood, their citizenship, everything to do that nasty thing. Now that is a true victim of history. And also, uh, underlying that behaviour is a shocking barbarism, isn't there? It always is shocking. Mm -hmm. It's always shocking. And I insist on being shocked. I'm never going to become immune. 
I think that's a kind of failure to see so much of it that you die inside. I want to be surprised and shocked every time. There is a reason that this article is my Roman Empire and I will not let it go. And it's because stuff like this that happened today in the UK. Here's what caught my eye. Her right seizing and spreading a wave of disinformation claims that the attacker was an immigrant to mobilize the anti-Muslim and anti-immigrant protests. Please say the suspect was born in Britain. And it reminded me of this article, which was written by the same author of this piece just a couple of months later. The job of terrorizing marginalized group for profit is never done. Unlike the Meghan Markle cookbook mosque article, the Telegraph had to issue an apology for this one because the author failed to do basic due diligence. Islamic Center at the center of this article responded to these claims at the time on their website. The Telegraph's assertion that identifying oneself as Muslim first is against, quote, British values is a direct insinuation that being Muslim contradicts being British. This is not just one journalist or one paper. You cannot just blame the far right here. I've done extensive research into this article, including contacting the author of the piece to find out what the, the original source was. I wrote about it. It was a three-part series. Go check it out on my Substack. Ultimately, a lot of this anti-immigrant, anti-Islamic sentiment is because of the congealed spaghetti, which is the British government, HJS, Henry Jackson Society, which is a right-wing, anti-Islamic extremist think tank, and then others like the Heritage Foundation in the United States. Heritage Foundation is connected with the Margaret Thatcher Institute. You'll see fellows from both going to different organizations like, like that little troll on Twitter that keeps trying to get Harry deported. Anyway, extremist think tanks like the HJS provide the talking points and the data for articles like these for outlets like these. Now, I want to be clear, this is not the only outlet or author. There are so many more. Don't give her that much credit. Do they want to get in the media? That they can influence the British government and policies around immigration and other things. And what's super egregious is that British journalists know. And if they don't know, they have zero excuse not to know the rise of extreme right-wing terrorism in the UK. One of the indicators of what influences these attacks are external factors like focus on anti-immigration policies. Then Met Assistant Commissioner Neil Basso at the time was quoted as saying, some of the criticism that we did not look at white supremacist right-wing violence as terrorism is probably justified criticism. They were focused on a certain kind and color of terrorism. Why does the media continue to run with trumped up, a lot of times false, tenuous connections between Muslims and immigrants and terrorism because they know in many cases that they have a readership that thrives off of fear, fear of others. So they have decided instead of reporting actual news, they will focus on what their readership wants, whether it's true or not. That is disgusting. But as Chapel Roan once famously said, my kink is karma. Instead of actually looking at the way that their rhetoric encourages it because they actually don't care. They don't give a shit. What you're probably going to see is a media that acts shocked by what's happened. We'll take no responsibility. And a great example of that, which I've also written about on my Substack, is after the death of Princess Diana. The media didn't change in any significant way, which is why the same stuff keeps happening. Because instead of taking a deep look at themselves and looking at the unethical, truly terrible ways they hounded the Princess of Wales. Truly one of my favorite was that there needed to be reform on foreign paparazzis. And it's really foreign paparazzis to blame because they were the ones that were chasing Diana to get the picture to get the picture so that the British media could bid on it and then publish it. I know that because the mirror, the mirror did it just weeks prior, a first picture of Diana and Dodie kissing on the yacht that went for, at the time, somewhere in the ballpark of 250,000 pounds, and this is in 1997. There cannot be change without public demand. There needs to be structural change here. Consequences legally, are clearly not enough. I'm not name calling, but I will say, one who has written hysterically, unfairly, or lied in pieces to stoke anti-Islamic hysteria and hysteria around immigration and not investigating or giving equal time to the rise of far right extremism in the UK, because for some of y'all, it's kind of your readership. You you have a responsibility here. People above you, the people that approve the articles, the people that are pushing for this kind of coverage, the people that are making the most money off of this, they also bear a brunt of the responsibility. Anyway, it's going to be very interesting to see the longer term pieces on this. I suspect a lot of finger pointing in any direction, except for themselves. Something needs to change. Enough is enough.
the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. And the...